and he was on TikTok when I first encountered affiliate marketing. And it, to be perfectly honest, it sounded too good to be true and I didn't really believe that it was a thing until I looked further into it and did some research of my own and realized, oh, this is, this is a thing. And not only is it a thing now, it's been a thing for a long time and it does work. I was a choir teacher for five years in the public school system in Connecticut. I have recently left that job, partly thanks to ClickBank, and now I don't have to wake up at the crack of dawn anymore. It's freeing. I have time to, to focus on my writing. I have time for my kids that I didn't have time for before. It's this, this sense of, of just newfound freedom has been the biggest the biggest change. And doing something that I that I truly love and I'm truly passionate about and that I know is making a difference for people on top of all of that freedom, it just it doesn't compare. Music, to me, is a way to tell a story. And I've always considered myself to be a storyteller, first and foremost. And everything that I've done in my life, every job I've ever had, has all been in relation to that one element of storytelling. I would get to school at usually like 6.15, sometimes even earlier, if like 5.45, I had to make copies of stuff because I wanted to get there before all the other teachers got there. I'd set up all my chairs. I'd be teaching all the way through until 2.15. Oftentimes there'd be meetings after school or there'd be rehearsals after school. And I would be working 12 to 14 hour days. By the time I got home, I was exhausted and it was hard to do any kind of creative work because I just felt like it had all been sapped from me. And while I loved the students, I had nothing to do with that. I loved the job, I loved the students. It was just, it was really taxing and sort of, you know, it just eats away at your soul a little bit at a time. When the pandemic hit, I decided that since my students used TikTok a lot, I didn't even know what that was before I was a public school teacher. And if you had told me back then that I'd be a hit on TikTok, I'd probably laugh in your face. But I thought, you know, what the heck? As a writer, I, I have to be better at it because that's how we market ourselves these days. The biggest thought was, what can I do? What kind of content can I give to people? What can I teach people that they can't get anywhere else and that I wouldn't run out of ideas for? I came up with this idea to, to break down songs and to, to teach people why they love the songs they love because I hadn't really seen much of that around at all, on TikTok at least. So I started doing that. My kids got really into it. My students were like, this is so cool, Mr. Bowles. Like how many, every, every week I'd go in and be like, how many, how many followers do you have now, Mr. Bowles? So it became this thing. <laughs> I have always wanted to cover If I Can't Love Her from Beauty and the Beast Quest. Quest is the highest note of the piece because it's really important that he's on this quest, right? That's the MT. My idea was to just kind of get a slow burn going, like see how many people I can just sort of get interested off the, you know, at the beginning and, and reel people in slowly and let people sort of discover me organically. I didn't want to push anything. I certainly wasn't going to spend any money on ads. And that slowly translated into people tuning in and sharing that content with other people. And it ballooned to almost 500,000 at this point. How Far I'll Go from Moana is a much cooler song than you think it is. Allow me to take you on a journey through the chorus of a whole new world and I will explain to you why it is so brilliantly constructed. I just made something unexpected, something sharp, something new. It was just a matter of being consistent and posting every day. But it really never stopped being about serving people and teaching people and entertaining people at the same time. You know, if I can teach somebody while engaging them and entertaining them, there's a more a higher likelihood that people would engage. As I was exploring my affiliate marketing options, I came across a, an affiliate marketing like educational program um, that I invested in and part of that program connected me with ClickBank. I learned more about the business. I learned more about affiliate marketing and how to set up a funnel and, and do all that stuff, which I had 
no idea how to do before that. When I went to ClickBank to look for what kind of a program I might want to sell or help promote, it was important to me to find something that I was passionate about and that I felt strongly about and that I believed in. Because if I didn't believe in it, people can see through that. And they know when you're just trying to sell them something versus when you're trying to get them to invest in something that's that's really good and that really works. So I sort of narrowed my search down to music because I knew it was gonna be something to do with music since that's what I do. And Piano For All, which is the program that I ended up promoting on there, was a, a high performer on ClickBank and I, I looked into it. I went through some of the videos and it looked like a really awesome thing and that I wish I had had when I was starting out. So if I had had that kind of a program, I probably could have taken years off of my, <laughs> my piano study. So that led me to put that out on my Instagram channels and my TikTok channels. Hello everyone, guess what? If you wanna brush up on your piano skills, if you wanna start playing piano, I found this amazing program for you. It is called Piano For All. When I woke up the next morning is when I went to look at the dashboard and it had already been like, like $450 or something. And I was like, that all happened while I was sleeping. Like that was just the craziest thing to me. It was like, that's, that's $450 that I made while I was literally asleep in my bed. And then over the course of the next day, just kept coming in. I was like, this is this is crazy. So like I'm working and I'm teaching at a school and I'm making, you know, like not nothing, but not a lot of money. And while I'm doing that, this other thing is like working in the background and money is being made. It was like a like a big weight like lifted off my shoulders. Cause it was like, you know, you you start something like that and you think and you hope that it's gonna work, but until that first like paycheck gets deposited into your account, it's like you don't really know. And so that was, it was like this moment of, I can do this, like I can do this and it's real and it works and I can keep doing this. Like there's no reason that I can't keep doing it. But just to have that first deposit come in, it's like, it was, that was life changing. It occurred to me that there is nothing out there for songwriters to learn, to master their craft and connect with their audiences other than going to grad school or going to an undergrad songwriting program. And it costs a lot of money and you have to go into significant amounts of debt to do those things. And it's not fair. And so I realized that I was becoming really passionate about being able to teach people this skill set and offer it at, at, a, at a price that people could actually afford. So it, it became clear to me that I needed to create a comprehensive, one-stop shopping songwriting education program that people could access without having to spend all that money on a degree. So that became like a mission for me was to, to create a program to serve people who don't have the money to be able to do that. Uh, a title in poetry or literature acts as a focusing device for us. And it sets us up to experience more of these moments since mornings is plural. So poets and novelists spend a great deal of time in There's nothing quite as magical as seeing a light bulb come on over a student's head when they finally get something that they've been struggling with. And that was a thrill for me teaching high school and it's a thrill for me now teaching this. When someone understands a concept for the first time, and not only understands the concept, but when they learn how to apply it, and then you measure the work they did before it, the work they do after it, and you see their eyes fill up with joy, that, that fills my heart. And so that, that is why, that's why teaching for me. There's nothing quite like the joy of seeing someone learn something. And then I started actually doing my master's program at Berkeley. The guy, the professor, he said something that resonated with me on a visceral level. He said, do something unreasonable today. Send that email, you know, like make that phone call, do it. But it was that, it was do something unreasonable today. And that was like his charge to, to the class. And the next day I typed my email resignation to my job. 
Well, this is it, the last day. I gotta turn in my badge and my keys. My last day as a teacher. Oh! Once I do this, I won't be able to get back in the building again. <laughs> okay, there it goes. Ah! And I remember it like so clearly. That was like my unreasonable thing. Not unrealistic, but unreasonable. I think there's a difference. Because I knew, I knew I could find a way to make this work. And it was, it, were, it was those words packaged in that way that I needed to kind of push me over the edge. Uh, but yeah, I remember that vividly. Taking that step of quitting my job and starting this business has completely irrevocably and totally changed my life and I would never in a million years go back. My life now is... I hesitate to use the word perfect, but it is as close to perfect as it could possibly be. Life is good. Let me be living proof to you that there is life on the other side and that it is possible to do this. It is possible. It's not no work. It does take a lot of work. And it's not easy in the sense that you just throw up your hands, sit on the couch and do nothing. But it's possible. And once you get past those initial hurdles, it pays dividends. And yeah, I'm not making $50 million a year. I'm not making, I'm make, not making yet $1 million a year. But I'm certainly making way more than I was making teaching. I, I have freedom. I have time to spend with kids to do the things that I really love, to travel, to go places, and it's hard to put a price on freedom, man. That's hard. So, if you're on the fence, don't be on the fence. Jump over the fence. Take the risk. Do the thing. Do something unreasonable today.